Columbia University and where we were studying very closely the work of Minerva and all the folks who are trying to disrupt our, our industry in education. And um, now I work at the Metropolitan Museum where I'm thinking about the future of culture and also the future of nonprofits and the future of the art sector. And it's been a fascinating journey. I've been there for two and a half years. They were looking to hire someone for, uh, for the Met who was not from the art world and I was super qualified. And I had taught journalism and digital media at Columbia for those 21 years before. And part of what I do at the Met is I, I run a 70 person startup inside a 145 year old organization. So many people are surprised to hear that the Met has invested so much in digital. So I'm the CDO, there is a separate CTO, the Chief Technology Officer, who has another 60, 70 people. And between us, we are thinking about how the experience of people who are interested in culture and arts uh, is changing. Um, I have just tweeted on my account and using the hashtag the WSIE, or my Twitter handle is at Sri, a slide from a presentation I give about all the lessons I've learned from my two years. So you can take a look at that when you have time. But I just wanted to highlight a couple of things uh, after our conversation with Mike and to follow up on what you've been hearing. So fascinating to hear how these different industries are changing. Just as I used to say when I was thinking about the future of education, that there's nothing more magical than a professor and 10 students in a room with no technology. The conversation, the understanding, the experience that is, happens there is magical. And at the Met, we talk about the magic of you and a piece of art in a gallery with no technology. But in both scenarios, when appropriate and when wanted, technology should be available to enhance that experience. That's what we are thinking about. What we want to do is to build a virtuous circle that makes the digital experience so fantastic that everybody wants to come eventually to you in person. And then once they come to you in person, the experience is so fantastic that they want to stay connected to you as they leave and make that happen again and again. And that's our goal. So when people ask me what my job is, I, I tell them that my job is very clear, very simple. I want to tell a million plus stories about our million plus pieces of art to a billion plus people. That sounds ridiculous and simple at the same time. Uh, our audience is a combination of the physical and the digital. We have 6.3, 6.4 million people who come to the museum in person every year. We have about 40 million who come on the web and we have another 100 million people on social. And what we want to do is increase all of those numbers. And we want to do that by using what we have learned watching other industries. And that's why hearing the customer service experience of even the insurance business tells us what we have to do. We're in the customer service business. We're in the travel business. We're in the business of, uh, of helping people. We're in the business of education. So, what we're doing is thinking about the museum not just as a special place you go to once in a while, but a museum is part of your life in multiple ways. And I want to give you a couple of quick examples. One is that we believe that we should be at all times just promoting the museum. If you get a chance and follow at Met Museum on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, you will see that our team is doing new kinds of connecting as a business. And we don't always say, come visit us. We want to be part of your lives. Our director, Tom Campbell, who's CEO and, and director of the museum, is on Instagram and was named one of the 23 best art Instagrams in the world. And that was mostly when he was on his iPhone 4S. He's now got a six, so watch out world. And the way he posts and the way he shares is so surprising to many people. First, they think I'm posting for him or my social media team is posting for him, but he's doing it himself. And in a recent 10 post stretch, nine posts were about other technology, other museums. And I was saying, boss, post about us. But can you imagine your CEO posting about your competition? Probably not. Uh, but in the, music, in the museum industry, we can because we're, we're, we're working together. And what I realized he was doing is a new kind of leadership. He, people follow him because he is at first a museum fan and they get to see what he's looking at. 
And he's posting from a place of transparency, a place of confidence, and a place of generosity. Three things that work wonderfully online. And that's why people follow him. So I hope you'll take a look at what he's doing. He is Thomas P. Campbell on Instagram. And he's just joined Facebook. And um, the other way in which we're looking at being part of people's lives is through our media lab, where we're working on the future of culture. And we have experiments and we work with corporations, with companies of most unusual companies to work together to figure out the future of culture. And uh, an example from that is a Google Chrome extension called Meow Met. And you download this, use Google Meow Met, you download it. And when you uh, install it on your computer, every time you open a new window in Chrome, you get a fresh cat from the Mets collection. And that's the right reaction, he applauded, that's right. And what happens is that too many businesses are spending their time and energy on social, promoting, selling, selling, begging people to buy their products. Instead, you want to think about social as a storytelling place, and think about a place where we can be part of your lives when we're not asking you for anything. And so what happens is now, these people are exposed to cats from the Met all day long, maybe 20, 30 times a day. And we never say, buy a ticket, come to our exhibition, see this, see that. So that's how we're, we're thinking about this. Of course, now people are asked, where's the dog Met? Where's the horse Met? You know, and we're not gonna do all that. We're gonna let people all over the world use our images to do that. So these are just a couple of simple examples of how we think that we have a role to play, but we can learn from everybody else. And when people ask, what is our competition? Is it MoMA, is it Guggenheim, is it the Louvre? I tell people our competition is not another museum. Our competition is Netflix, Candy Crush, and Life in 2017, 2016. That's, that's our competition. And so we're in the business of trying to get attention to what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Tree, appreciate that.